दोस्तों सबसे पहले सब्सक्राइब किस तरह से करना है बता दूं नाम के सामने सब्सक्राइब लिखा है उस पर टिक कीजिए इसके बाद जैसे आप टिक करेंगे बाजू में आपको बेल आइकॉन दिखाई देगा उस बेल आइकॉन को दबाइए तो जैसे ही मैं कोई नया वीडियो डालूंगा आपको नोटिफिकेशन मिल जाएगा और हाँ अगर आपको नोट चाहिए तो डिस्क्रिप्शन में आपको लिंक मिल जाएगा वेलकम टू पार्ट फोर ऑफ रोटेशनल स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी इन दिस पार्ट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस आइसोटोप इफेक्ट अप्लीकेशन एंड लिमिटेशन ऑफ रोटेशनल स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी इफ वन ऑफ द एटम इन हेट्रो न्यूक्लियर डायटोपिक मॉलिकूल इज आइसोटोप देन द कॉन्स्टेंट बी इज हैविंग डिफरेंट वैल्यू दैट मीन्स रोटेशनल स्पेक्ट्रो ऑफ टेन इज डिफरेंट Let's discuss now. As you know, deuterium is a isotope of hydrogen. Hydrogen is having mass number one, whereas deuterium having mass number two. Whereas C thirteen and C twelve, as you know, these are the two isotopes of carbon. So twelve and thirteen, these are nothing but atomic masses. So suppose that first rigid rotator, which is shown here. is of carbon 12 that is mass number of carbon is 12 so let us suppose that mass of hydrogen atom is m1 and mass of c12 carbon is m2 okay and there is suppose another rigid rotator in which c13 that is isotope of carbon is taken now suppose here mass of hydrogen is again m1 that is same as that of first rigid rotator and mass of carbon is now m2 dash which is isotope of carbon now the bond length of these two rigid rotator is same for m1 m2 dash reduce mass will be higher because you see mu for m1 m2 is m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 whereas for another rigid rotator it becomes m1 m2 dash divided by m1 plus m2 now since value of m2 dash is higher that's why value of reduced mass is higher for the second rigid rotator now moment of inertia is directly proportional to reduced mass that means if reduced mass for second rigid rotator is higher then definitely moment of inertia is also higher because i is equal to nu r square now you know b is related with moment of inertia by the relation b is equal to h upon 8 pi square ic now since here moment of inertia is in denominator that's why value of b is inversely proportional to moment of inertia which is higher for the second rigid rotator that means since now inverse relation that is b for second rigid rotator is lower value now let us see what is the effect of these factors on the rotational spectra so first spectra is of rigid rotator m1 m2 whereas second spectra is for isotope that is m1 m2 dash rigid rotator now see here since value of b is lower for the isotope that means that spectra is shifted towards the lower value of b so rotational spectrum for the isotope is appear at lower value of b that is rotational constant now let us discuss applications of microwave spectroscopy as you know moment of inertia can be calculated by using i is equal to h upon 8 pi square pc as you know b is obtained from the rotational spectra because you know twice b is equal to distance between two spectral line so if we know b from the rotational spectra you can calculate moment of inertia this we already discussed in the part 3 where we discuss numericals for determination of moment of inertia second application 
is determination of bond length. As you know, moment of inertia is related with bond length by the relation I is equal to nu R square, where R is nothing but a bond length. So R is equal to square root of I upon Q. So if we know I as discussed above, then by putting value of I and nu, we can calculate the internuclear distance that is R. Now let us discuss limitations of microwave spectroscopy. As you know, microwave spectra is obtained only when that molecule possesses a dipole moment. That means the spectroscopy is not for molecules which do not have dipole moment. So this is first limitation of this microwave spectroscopy. Then second limitation is that the sample must be in gaseous state because as you know, rotation of molecule, it is occur in gaseous state only. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe the channel.